Hey guys, we're going to build Snake and Processing, and this is actually a pretty fun game to build. Um, I've tried building this before, I thought it would be super easy to build, especially since we were building all these grids. But when I started to try to move the snake around the screen, I realized that there was a problem. You don't want the whole snake to move around as one thing. So before we go into this walkthrough, we're going to be talking about array lists. So basically, an array list is a good way to, first of all, the main reason I want to use an array list is because as I eat apples, I'm going to get bigger. The thing is going to grow. So I'm always constantly going to have trouble keeping track of how big my array is going to be. So arrays, the arrays that we use normally, they're not able to change size. If you want to change the size, you have to create a new array and make it a different size and then add all the values in. And that's actually what an array list does. It just does it for you. Some of the methods I'm going to use are going to be a little bit different. So instead of writing length, for example, you'll see me write size, so dot size. And instead of just indexing it with square brackets in the letter or, or the number, you will use get in, in the parentheses, you'll put the number. So it's kind of hard to explain. So let's go ahead and start the game. Okay, <laughs> that's doing very good. All right, so there's our grid. So let's first create class apple, and those apples will basically be green squares all around the, the board, and they'll be randomly located. Okay, so we drew the apple class, so we just basically have two fields, X and Y. Okay, so we just have basically two fields, X and Y. The X's and Y's are going to be randomly generated, and they'll go from anywhere between zero and num lines. So you, you have to use the int part to make sure it's a, an integer. We want these to be integers because we want them to fit exactly into the grid. So, and we're going to use the same W that we have in our main class. So this W is going to be how wide they are, and that's going to be the same for the apple as it is for the grid. So we're just going to fill a rectangle with the X times Y and the Y times W, sorry, X times W, Y times W, and then the width of them will be the same, and I just made them green. Okay, so every time you run this, they'll be randomly generated, and then I created an array, not an array list, but a regular array of apples, and I'm going to have exactly three of them. I could make five of them if I wanted to. And that's why I use dot length in all my code. And then I can display them so you'll see five randomly generated apples. And those are going to be our things to eat. But five's too easy. You know, I think the real game is like one, but three is a good number. I like to have more than one because then I can test it faster. <laughs> all right, so now we're going to make the snake. So the snake's going to be a little bit harder. So let's go ahead and open up a new tab.
So this red square is going to represent my snake's head. So we just start off with the head. So the um, class you saw me write was a array list. Now array list is like a, its own class in itself. So you have to do a little bit different. You initialize a new array list and then you can add anything you want. So I just decided to make it five and 10. So the red square will always start in the same place. You can do that however you want. So basically that's going to be the beginning. And then what we're going to do is also give it a direction string because we're we know we're going to control this thing and we know that we're going to grow this thing that's why we're using an array list so there's some stuff you have to think about before you start building the class so knowing that we've got the direction let's go ahead and now start to make it move and what i'm going to do at the same time i'm going to put inside of here i'm going to write a method using the up and left right down arrow keys to control the direction and i'm going to do that by just setting the value of the directional string, the dir, equal to whatever, if it's up, I'll just make it equal to up. And that way I can just tell the snake which way to move. Okay, so I haven't actually written it yet, but I just wanted to get it working. You saw I probably had a few mistakes here. So the first thing is, using the key code, I'm going to set the directions equal to left, right, up, and down. And actually what I decided to do is I just wrote it, the move, but I'm not actually writing the, because this is actually going to be a little harder than just a second. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure that this method was working properly. So basically now when I run this, it'll just print it into the console down here at the bottom left. So as I run it, even though it's not moving, I know that the arrows are working. So everything, my code is ready now set up to use the arrows as it's working. So let's go ahead and talk about this. So if I want this thing to move up, the easiest thing would be to just subtract one from the Y coordinates. But like I said, I don't want to just subtract all of the coordinates from the Y. I only really want to do that to the head. Everything else, I want to like make it go to where the other one was with the exception, so I want to start at the back. So first thing I want to do is move everything from the back forward to the one in front of it, okay? Even though I'm going to start off with just one, so it's going to skip that step, I still want to do that, all right? And then, so I might have a null pointer exception. I might have to throw in uh, if, you know, make sure it's bigger than that. But I think I don't, I think it'll be okay. But once I got like so the last segment will go to the second to last the second to last will go to the third to last etc once i go through the whole snake then i'll move the the snake like we said just subtract one for from y to go up okay so we'll do that in reverse order Okay, so I just wrote it for the first one, but before I copy it for all the other ones, I just want to show you how it works. So essentially what I do is I start at the end, okay, so I start at i equal to the last index, which is the size of it, minus one. Important that you don't have, if you don't have that, you'll have a null pointer exception. You're going to go in as long as i is greater than zero, because remember, we don't want i to equal zero, because that's going to be our head. So right here, this right here is move the head. Everything else follows where it will go. So we starting at i, you're going to replace it. So you're going to set the value at index i equal to the x value at get i minus 1. What this, this is hard to understand. You just take a second and just fill that, that, that 
blah, 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 blah. <laughs> if you just take a second and read what is actually written there, so you're going to set the x value at this location. So let me write a comment so you can kind of understand it better. So it's um, dot set, it's index, and then it's value. Okay, so that's the way it's written. So the first thing is the index. Where do you want to put this value? Okay, I want to put the the value at i, and what do you want to put there? I want to put the value of the the value it was ahead of it. So whatever I want to put that last value equal to the one at the second to last value. So I'm basically doing that, and at the end, the head and the first or the value right next to it will have the same, but you're going to move the head, and then you're done. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this part right here. So let's see how we would do that if it was down. So essentially, this will be the same way. Oh, actually, before I do that, let's also build in our case. So we don't want to move this. You'll notice when we run this, the sucker is just going to go off and take off. We don't want it to do that. We want to build in a condition. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say if. Uh, in order for it to go up, we need y the head to be below zero, right, or above zero. So zero would be the top of the screen. So we just do this. So we only actually move this thing if it's greater than zero. So let's try it again. So it stops. Perfect. So now let's copy this code here, and let's paste it into the down method. So what happens if it's down? Well, now we want it to be less than, whoops. We want this to be a less than. And we want it to be, uh, how far can it go down? Well, the number of lines, but we have to also minus one. Otherwise, it'll go one last. OK, and we don't want to subtract one. We want to add one. So let's see if it can move up and down. So there's up, there's down. So we're moving up and down, just no problem, OK? Now, let's copy this and do left and right. So it's a little bit different for left and right. We're going to now do the x coordinate. Okay, if we're going left, we want to make sure that this is greater than zero. The x coordinate of the head, that's what this is. And then we're going to move the head, if that's true, by one less than the x zero. Okay. And for the right, we might as well just write them both at the same time. Same thing. We're going to check to make sure that the x is less than num lines minus 1. And then we're going to move the x to the x plus 1. So actually, that's run the same. All right, so we've got the movement down. We can move everywhere. So we're actually almost done. Now, you might be wondering, this isn't that hard to make something move. However, we haven't really, um, the reason we're doing it this way is because we're anticipating eating apples. So we've actually set ourselves up for a very important piece. So let's go into the apple class. And the reason I want to do it in the apple class is because I've got multiple apples. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the apple um, if apple dot is eaten. So we'll write a method called is eaten by the snake. So that's what eats it. We'll just print line. We'll just first we'll just test the method to make sure it works. I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, jeez, my fingers are so fat. All right, if apple is eaten by a snake, we're gonna print out. Ouch! So let's go ahead and write that. Void is. Oh wait a second, what did I write? If okay, I'm gonna make it a boolean because it's a. So since this is a condition, if this is eaten, we'll make it a boolean. So we'll have to return either true or false. Is eaten, and we're going to pass in a snake parameter. We'll just say s to make it. Uh, I'll just write. I'll just write snake snake. Eh, I don't want to do that because I've. I'll just use s. It doesn't really matter to be honest because it's a local variable once you've made it that way. Um, so let's see if it is eaten. So how are we going to test it? So basically, it's pretty simple. So we just say if x is equal to s dot get or no s dot x dot get zero, and y 
is equal to s dot y dot get zero. So we just really want to know if it's equal to the head. If that's true, return true. So that'll be, and then of course else, return false. So that's actually kind of an easy method to write. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, oh apple I. Each apple is looking to be eaten. All right, let's see if we can eat an apple. Oh, it's moving fast. Oh, ouch. It said ouch. Oh my gosh, it's too fast. Okay, so I'll, let me slow this down. <laughs> In the setup, you can actually change the speed of your game by doing frame rate. Frame rate's default is 60, so if you choose a number like 10, it'll be considerably slower for old people like me. All right, so let's go ahead and leave that at 10. All right, now let's eat some apples. Ouch, ouch. Okay, so now that's good. So we know that the method is working, that the snake head is eating the apples. So we wanna do more than just that though. We don't just wanna say ouch, we wanna actually grow the apple. And what else do we wanna do? We wanna move the apple. So instead of printing ouch, or well, we can leave that in there because it's kind of funny. We'll say apple i equals new apple. So this will just move the apple once it's eaten. Because remember, it's randomly generated. So as we go around, so apples gets reappeared. Basically spawns a new apple. Ouch. Ouch. I don't know if apples really say ouch when they get eaten. Mine just says crush. <laughs> That's so funny. The dad joke. My daughter would be like, dad joke. All right. Now, let's go into Apple. What else we want to do is, in this method, we want to tell that snake. So this is actually kind of cool. We're passing in the snake, but the snake that we're passing in is the snake in our game. So how do we want, what do we want to do to that snake in this is eaten? So aside returning true, we also want to do s.x.add. We're going to add the value of the x, but we're going to put it at the head. So we're going to add the value of itself. So we're going to add the x of itself. So remember, I think I did this. I don't know if I've explained add, it's index and then value. Okay, so the first number is where we're gonna put it. We're gonna put it at the front, because we're gonna put it where the head is. Because, well it doesn't really matter, I guess we put it at the second one or the first one. But I'm just gonna put it at the head and that will slide everything down. And then the x will be what we're adding. Okay, so we're gonna add that and also do the same thing for the y. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Very. All right. So let's see what happens. Hope it works. Yay. So now it's adding. Yay. Pretty cool, right? So we're actually pretty much done. I mean, this tutorial is pretty fast. So now all we have to really do is figure out how to make it die. So it's actually not dead. I could just keep going. So it's stopping because I told it to stop, but I also want to make it die. So that's actually the key. I can make it die right there. So let's actually do it this way. We're gonna go, um, so in our draw, this is basically our main game right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna indent this. I'm gonna do this only if game state is equal to zero, which is what it is when it starts, right? So you're like, well, okay. And by the way, I need to declare, let's make int game state. And the reason I use ints for game states is because I usually like to have a start screen, an end screen, maybe another level. So we'll just leave it at z zero for the beginning. And then if we die, we just change it to something else. So when do we want to die? Well, the easy way is when, you know how we did this part in our move method? So if we move in, let's say, so what is the point of this condition? This condition makes sure that we're not at the top. If we're trying to move up and we're at the top, that's actually death. So all you have to do is write else and then write game state equals one or whatever, anything. Okay, so I can actually just add that line of code right there to all of that. So instead of just having it end, I'll just put it as else. So all of these are going to kill the, the game states, okay? You could add more code too if you wanna say you died. 
So instead of just doing game state equals one, I could write um, text that you hit the wall. And then do game state equals one. Okay, so I'll just do that. So that'll be. What? Oh, where? Where am I going to put this? Um, let's go 20, 20. Doesn't matter. So I'll, if I uh, am going right and I hit the wall, I'll just say that. So just to show you. So now, move over. You hit the wall. See that? So that's kind of something you could add. But notice the game doesn't restart. So one thing that's easy is you can just, how do you want to restart? Um, so you could either write a key to do it, or you could just do the mouse. I could even write, press the mouse to continue. So if the mouse is pressed, well, you could just restart it. But I actually want to do the setup again. So if I just do the setup function, that will reinitialize. Oh, no, it won't. I can say game state equals zero. I can reset game state equals zero in there. So basically, when I reset now, hit the wall, click the button, it restarts. OK, so far so good. There's only one thing left to do, which is to, oh, I got to make sure I can't go. See what I did there? I went back. You can't do that. So how are we going to take care of that? All right, well, let's take care of that in here. So you see how we said, if key code is left, switch the direction to left. Well, actually, we have to say and snake.dir does not equal um, with uh, right. Okay. And so I'll just go ahead and complete the rest of those. Okay, so there's that. So now it won't kill me if I try to turn around. It just won't do it. So now the only other thing I want to do is make a kill method if it hits the tail. So let's write a method for the tail. So void check tail. Oh, actually, let's make it a Boolean because it's a condition. So Boolean. And what we'll do is we'll say if. No, actually, let's go for int i equals one. We don't want to check the head against itself. Um, if i equal one, i is less than x dot size. So we're going to check all of these against the head. If any of these are the same location as the head, we want to return true. So if um, x dot get, that's oh, if x dot get zero equals x dot get i and y dot get zero equals y dot get i. If both of those things happen, then return true. And then we don't write else, you just want to write return false. So if it makes it through there and it never returns true, we'll just return false. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to say um, if snake.checktail, so if that happens, if we run into our tail, we can write text. You hit, you ran into yourself. And we can do this at um, 4040, 40, whatever. Oops. And then we can say game state capital S equals one. Okay. And actually, let's increase the text size a little bit. So in the setup, we'll do text size. And we'll make it 44. All right. Last check. Okay. So start the game. Eat some apples. Ouch, it says. Ouch, it says. Ouch, it says. So we're doing great. We're eating apples. This is my favorite part, debugging. 
I'm not playing video games. I'm debugging. Whenever your mom catches you playing video games, just tell them you're debugging. Oh, you ran into yourself. Okay, so our game is finished. We've got the apples working. Everything is good. Now it's basically just a plain game, though. You can just now watch the next video if you want to see how I styled mine. Or you can just play around with the style yourself. So I hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, like it. Send it to all your friends. And everything else that kids do today. So talk to you later.